This guide is going to help you figure out the very best legendary equipment that you should be making. And with the new iconic equipment system added into the game, everybody at some point in their journey should make some number of legendary pieces. In fact, I got a comment on my last video about the best free to play and new player equipment where a player was saying, hey, I'm free to play and I got like a full legendary set. So let's talk about the legendaries that you should make because over time, you will get the materials and over time, you should definitely craft these specific legendaries. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and this is about the very best legendary equipment in Rise of Kingdoms. There's gonna be timestamps in the description to jump to whichever part of this you're interested in. We're gonna start about the guiding principles. How do I figure out what the best legendary items are? And then I'm gonna talk about the very best items themselves, so you know these are the specific things you upgrade first. And then I'm even gonna give you legendary sets. I'm gonna start with value-oriented sets and then show you the actual best sets you can make in the game which some of them I have assembled and some of them obviously I'm still working on because the KVK equipment is very difficult to obtain. So what makes for an amazing set of equipment and what makes for an amazing individual piece that you should go and craft? Here are the guiding principles. First and foremost, you've heard me say this many times, that health is a preferred stat to defense, which is a preferred stat to attack. In almost all situations, there will be exceptions but as a guiding rule of thumb, that's a pretty safe way to go. The next thing that obviously matters is the quantity of stats. Certain items, like this Hope Cloak, have more stats than other legendary items, even in the exact same slot. The next thing that makes a piece of equipment favorable is a stat swap, going from, for example, a piece that would give you attack to a piece that would give you defense, or a piece that gives you defense to a piece that gives you health, as again, an example here, going from this Quinsoul, which gives attack. It's a pretty big upgrade to move to a Hope Cloak, which not only has more stats, but it also has defense, an improvement of the stat type that you're getting. The last couple factors that I wanna talk about is that this is going to be equipment that is good even without getting a special talent. So I don't want this to be about special talent legendaries, even though obviously special talents are nice. That's a lot of materials to go and get. And lastly, I will talk about the KVK items in this video because they're obviously kind of insane. And overall, the legendary KVK items, including the weapons and helmets, have the most stat points that you can get per legendary material that you spend. Now, that doesn't mean that they're always, however, the best upgrade. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we go because you don't always want to swap from, for example, if you're using cavalry stuff, you, you don't want to swap necessarily from defense to attack. I mean, yes, the KVK weapon's really good, but there's other considerations here than just the quantity of stats per legendary material that you're going to invest to make the item. Now, I'm going to share this with you at the front of the video, which is that the accessories are actually just insane. Like, they're very powerful. And for most people who are replacing an empty slot with a legendary accessory, you really should be just making legendary accessories if you care mostly about the open field rather than trying to talent and refine legendary equipment. I want to call that out at the front of the video and later on we're going to do some math and it'll make a lot of sense as to why it is. The legendary accessories are so good and I made a dedicated video explaining in depth why it is that they're good, where each accessory is good and why you would use them. Card will be up in the top for that video. I'll remind you of that at the end. You can watch it later. So let's start with infantry because there's two very good infantry pieces I want to talk about outside of the KVK items. And again, we're talking about things that I'm not assuming you're going to talent them. I'm just assuming you're going to make them. And what kind of value do you get? I already talked about up front the Hope Cloak. This might be actually one of the best individual legendary items in the game, obviously outside of the KVK stuff, because if you upgrade to this item, you're going from a talented Quinn Soul giving 10.5% attack to 12% defense. Not only have you switched from attack to defense, you've also gained 1.5% of stats. It doesn't require multiple pieces. It's not part of a set. And in this case, that's an okay thing. 
because you don't really want to make the infantry set chest anyways. That's got attack. So the Hope Cloak is actually just one of the stronger individual legendary items to just outright craft. And I mean, I haven't looked back since I started making Hope Cloaks. The other piece for infantry that is very noteworthy is the helmet slot. This is, again, because you're hunting for a stat swap. Normally, you have attack on your helmet. Talented, you're getting 10.5% of infantry attack. Switching to the set helmet not only opens up the opportunity of working toward a set bonus. The two-piece bonus, by the way, is 3% defense. But also, you have an extra half a percent of stats. So you're getting a stat swap and half a percent of stats. The set helmet is actually a great item to make pretty early on. So if I were to whip up all these things into a killer infantry set where you're starting to make your first upgrades to legendary items, then what I would offer you is the following items for your weapon. Stick with the blue shield. Man, it's just really good. For the helmet, you go with the set helmet. For the chest piece, we just talked about going for Hope Cloak. This thing is amazing. Now, to round out your infantry set bonus, you're going to go for the set gloves for infantry, which are right over here. This gives you another 3% of stats, even though you aren't getting a stat swap, even though you aren't getting more stats by virtue of upgrading from the Seth's Brutality being talented. You get the set bonus. That gives you 3% of stats, which is a nice upgrade. From there, you're going to stick with the Epic Legs the uh, Karak's Humility, and you're going to stick with the Epic Boots. And boom, you've got yourself a really amazing set. Now, assuming you had Epics in those previous slots and you're upgrading to Legendaries for the chest, for the gloves, and for the helmet, you're looking at 160 Legendary materials. That's no small amount. You are gaining 5% of stats, which is okay, plus... Your stats swapping a lot of attack into defense. So 160 legendary materials, giving you a stat swap and also 5% of stats. Now you can start to see why for 120 legendary materials, an accessory looks like a pretty good pickup. Talk about that more at the end, okay? One last thing I'll just mention, and a part of the reason I recommended the set gloves instead of the set boots, is that eventually you might consider upgrading um, to a legendary boot. A lot of people will gain access to Shio's Return by virtue of getting it from Lost Canyon. Technically, you can pick up half a percent of extra stats there. It's a consideration. One other consideration, by the way, for the infantry set is if you want it, you could do set boots and set gloves, and that would free up your helmet slot if at some point you know you're going to go for a KVK helmet. That is a lofty objective, a further down the road thing after you've been playing for a while, then you might want to set yourself up for that uh, and go for the set boots and gloves instead of doing the set helmet. And then obviously, you know, for the amount of materials you're spending on these helmets, it is a lot of stats and they are very powerful. Now this next set and, and equipment I want to talk about is specifically for cavalry. Um, and this is super relevant. I'm about to make this set so this is about to be a little bit of a money where my mouth is uh, moment for crafting over the coming, I guess, week or two when I unlock Nevsky on my restart account. But when we get a look at cavalry equipment, there are some really strong epics here. The legendaries you will make, however, are going to be the set chest and boots. Now set chest gives health, which is amazing. Best stat you could hope for. Boots are giving health, which is amazing. Best stat you could hope for. And you get a set bonus of 3% health, which is just gravy. So I really like those particular items. In addition, the Ash of the Dawn is worth mentioning in the leg slot. It is just a decent amount of stats for a decent amount of materials. 60 legendary materials buys you 1.5% more health than you could get from the epic. There's no stat swap. But this piece is still really good and worth mentioning. And in this instance, I am going to also sort of leave out maybe honorable mention to Navarre's Control, I guess. I mean, Navarre's Control is good. 8% of health. I use it. It's a part of your very best set. But like, I, I think that you can stick with a set Sufferance, right? For 0% of extra stats over what you're getting from a set Sufferance and only stat swapping 4% of attack to health. Like, I, I just would not focus on that for quite some time. You probably have other 
priorities. The final piece here that's really worthy for your cavalry when you're just starting to upgrade to legendaries is going to be the set helmet. And preferably, I would even say the KVK helmet if you could get access to it. Uh, the set helmet is going to be a stat swap from attack over to defense. Big win. And just like with the infantry set, how the KVK helmet is a really solid upgrade, I would say the same is true here, where if you think about it, this is 60 legendary materials and you're getting 11% of stats. That is only a half a percent of stats extra, by the way, from what you already have, the 10.5%. And it does have a stat swap. But for 30 more legendary materials, I mean, if you had the pattern for the Pride of the Khan, 30 more legendary materials for 4% more defense is gangbuster. Again, we're talking about your first upgrades here. If you were to go for talents, the calculus changes a little bit. If you're, you know, refining repeatedly, there are advantages to having um, the cavalry helmet from the set rather than uh, having a non-set item. But I think just sort of, if you're making three legendaries with no expectation of getting a talent, I would say going for the set boots, set chest, and then ideally KVK helmet, but set helmet would be really great. Now, if you are going that route, you're going to complement those three legendaries with a few epics. The epics that you're going to complement for that set are going to be the Heart of the Saint. This is one of the last pieces you upgrade from. It's very strong. Also, I mean, Gladiator legs are really good. 10.5% health. Yeah, Ash the Dawn's better. But considering that you're not stat swapping and you already have health, I mean, you could stick with this for a while. And then the gloves we already talked about. The Isset's gloves, really, really strong. That Cav set is what I intend to make. Uh, and I, maybe that sometime down the road, we'll put a card up in the top for that video where I go make that set because I think it's really good. And then I'm not going to touch it for a while. I might put a few Iconics onto it, maybe. Uh, and I'll use Nevsky William and be just very happy with that. Now, we're going to talk about Archer Legendaries last. And this is not a coincidence, by the way. A part of the reason that we're doing that is that the Epic Archer equipment is already very good. I still have two full Epic Archer sets with some legendary accessories. Again, I talked about how legendary accessories are very good. Probably a first priority for getting the most bang for your material. However, uh, the set bonuses here are really nice, but the set does have a little bit of a flaw. The flaw with the Revival set, which has a four-piece bonus and a two-piece bonus is that the gloves give a lot of different stats. You only get 6% of attack here, so there's an opportunity to get more stats just by making a legendary. And on the chess piece, it only has 10% of total stats with talent compared to other epics we've been talking about all video that have half a percent more once talented. So there is an opportunity here, and when we look at what to do for archers, this is where things get just a little bit weird because of the set math. So here's what you can do. Um, and this is one of the last things I would recommend that you do, unless you really care about archers, and then, okay, sure, do your archers first. But if you replace this epic set and you start with the chess piece, which uh, I can show you exactly what this looks like. We'll build it out as we go here. You could do the chess piece and you can do the gloves. Now, if you were to go this route, you are going to gain 2.5% of stats. Uh, this is because, again, you're going from 10% of stats on the chest to now 11, and you're stat swapping defense to health. That's a win. And then on the gloves, you're just straight up going to get 1.5% more stats. So you're looking at 2.5% more stats. You are gaining the archer set bonus, which gives you 3% attack, and you are losing the Revival four-piece bonus, which gives you 3% defense. So you're stat-swapping the wrong way there, which is not amazing. So you can do these upgrades, and if you really wanted to put some Iconic Crystals onto Archers, I think that's where I would recommend that you start, unless if you really want value, and I wish I had maybe prioritized my KVK rewards a little bit differently, but if you really want value, you leave the Revival set alone entirely, okay? W remember, what I just showed you, this legendary upgrade for the for these two items, okay, is going to run you 100 legendary materials, 60 for the chest, 40 for the gloves. 
but and that's only giving you two and a half percent of stats and a little bit of stat swapping, some favorable, some not. But if you just make the KVK weapon, okay, you're starting over here with the epic weapon. If we just make the KVK weapon, oh my gosh. I mean, you're looking at an extra 8% of stats for the KVK archer weapon. That's amazing. For 150 legendary materials, 8% of stats sounds a lot better, okay, than 2.5% of stats for 100 legendary materials. Now, this requires a special pattern. And the set bow is also really good, by the way. Like, if you want to just spend, I think it's, what, 90 legendary materials, you gain 3% of defense stats. I mean, you don't even need to go for a set bonus. It's still a pretty good spot to be in. Um, there are some other archer configurations that, you know, if you were only making three legendary pieces, and I don't think this is a great end state, but if you were only making three for archers, um, you could do dragon's breath bow. You could do the set gloves, okay? And uh, then on top of that, there, there's the set gloves, okay? That gives you some attack stat. And then instead of doing the set chest piece, just go for the Milky Way. I mean, I haven't done this, right? But the Milky Way's got a lot of health. And if you were stopping there, I mean, it's pretty decent. The, the only flaw with that is that ultimately, I think you do want to make either the full archer set or the KVK helmet and KVK weapon and then the rest archer set. I think that's your desired end state. So the Milky Way is really not on plan for that. Um, but archers are sort of weird. That That's my lowest priority currently for upgrades. This is influenced in part by the fact that right now, we got a lot of great infantry, we got a lot of great cavalry, and we're still waiting for a Nevsky or CPO quality archer to arrive in the game. Perhaps by the time you're watching this, they will be in game. And in that case, the archer equipment may be a little more relevant. Now, my goal in this video was to show you the very first upgrades you should be making for legendaries. And... If what you want to do is make lots of legendary pieces so that you can apply lots of iconic crystals that you wouldn't have been able to apply otherwise, then by all means, making armor is a good way to get a lot of different legendaries in play that you can then make iconic and get the iconic bonus. And that is very valuable. But I'll be honest, for 120 legendary materials, just making an accessory might be more bang for your buck overall in terms of how much punch you actually get. And in terms of which accessories you should make, for open fielders, you're looking at first the dagger, then the web, assuming that you're bringing at least three marches to the open field. Uh, I have a dagger and a web. They're both very, very strong when there are multiple things that you're going to be hitting in the field. Uh, there's my web. Uh, my dagger is currently on my Trajan, I suppose. Yep, there it is. And after that, I really like horn and ring for super high damage. I generally am on board with five rings, three horns, one dagger, one web in a perfect situation. But, you know, that's an insane amount of materials. And on the topic of perfect situations, what's the best you can do in the game? The very best infantry set in the game, uh, I think, looks like this. <laughs> and I happen to already have it. Uh, which is insane. That is the KVK weapon and the KVK helmet. Both of them are talented, which is just disgusting. If you didn't have the KVK items, obviously you would be using the set items instead. If you wanted to know what the best of the best is for cavalry, I've got a set designed for that as well. You might think, oh, this is, this is the best that you can do, right? Because I have the KVK weapon and I have the KVK helmet. But that's actually not true. Um, technically what's better, if you can go for talents, is to have a talented... Um, set weapon and a talented set helmet instead of having non-talented weapon and non-talented helmet from the KVK stuff. This is really good. Navarre's control. Again, I talked about Ash of the Dawn. The, the set chest is really good and also set boots just being absolutely amazing. Love all that. And then for archers, until you can actually talent the KVK weapon and talent the KVK helmet, I think you're better off with this set over here, which is the full archer set, it could be that if you can get at least one of the two KVK items talented, then it's probably better than the full set. But the full archer set is really good. It's giving you 5% more archer health. So you really, I think, need both 
uh, the KVK helmet and weapon to be talented before you'd say, yeah, I want to break up this archer set because 5% health is just really amazing. If you want to see me forge some of these items, um, and I'll be doing this on my restart project, prioritizing these things that I was just telling you today, then consider subscribing to the channel because I will be doing that over the next week or two as I unlock CPO and Nevsky uh, on my restart project and I work on William uh, and maybe some other commanders as well. I need to build out a cav set and I might be building out an archer set to be determined. So subscribe, throw a like on here and check out that video I told you about earlier if you want more details, way in depth on the accessories. Card will be up in the top for that one. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom and leave a comment down below with your thoughts on these legendaries. I think they are some of the very best first legendaries to go and work on once you are actually looking at armor, but I think the accessories are actually just like the way to go in most cases.